Welcome to 60 Matthews. I'm Matthew, and today I'm going to talk about art. In future videos, I'll go more in depth into movies, music, paintings, theater, all the things that I've, that I know enough to talk about, but specifically today I want to talk about the experiencing of art. All of these different art forms transport you to the same place, where you as the audience can have a raw, real conversation with the artist without the physical binds of this realm. Paintings, songs, movies, sculptures, all of these are just physical representations of ideas, feelings, emotions, opinions, things that can't translate into descriptive words. When you have a real visceral reaction to a piece of art, it's not like your brain is saying, I enjoy that color combination and the way those shapes blend together really well, or the sounds that that guitar is making sync really well with that interesting drum beat. It bypasses the brain and goes straight to the heart. It's not an intellectual experience. It's the artist's soul plugging directly into your soul. Think about your favorite movie or your favorite song or that one scene in that one movie. If someone were to ask why you loved it or what you loved so much about it, would you be able to sum it up with just a few words? Probably, maybe, but you would need a vast vocabulary. And a lot of times whenever you have to think about it, you go, ooh, it just, I don't know, it, 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 it does this thing, it just, the, the, all of it, all of it escapes words because it's not that type of conversation. It works similar to if we're having a conversation about religion or spirituality and we use the word God, where the word God is just the painting or the song or the book or whatever. God is not that painting or that song or that one scene, in that one movie. God is this concept that is greater than just those three letters. If we're having a conversation about religion or about spirituality and we were using the word interchangeably, we understand what each one is talking about, even though my idea of God might completely differ from your idea of God. And we might agree, we might disagree, but we can have this intellectual conversation where we're discussing different concepts, using words and listening to each other's words. But when we're clicking and we're tuned into each other's frequencies, words escape us sometimes. We get to the state of, yeah, that. Art takes us to that same place where we're doing this. Whenever I studied theater, one of the biggest things that I learned was that we all wear masks. We all have this vulnerable, raw side of us, but we put up these walls of armor and hide behind them. Some more than others. Some live completely in the moment and what you see is what you get. But even they, to a certain extent, have a side of them that they don't like sharing to the rest of the world. But artists tend to hide behind them more. Sometimes they don't have the words to, to explain how they feel or the emotions, how they can sum it up perfectly. A lot of musicians and painters and writers during interviews sound really uninteresting because that's not their medium of conversation. But then you look at their artwork and you can look at, the, at a painting and, and understand viscerally what someone's going through. Or you can watch a movie and have this emotional response. Or you can listen to a song and say, yes, they just get me. One of the best examples I know of this was whenever I went to, whenever I saw two different paintings in the Chicago Institute of Art. I saw a Dali piece and I had never seen one in real life before. Dali was my first favorite painter and he still kind of is to a certain extent, but I have to break down my genres now. So whenever I saw the Dali piece, it was beautiful. I saw it and just had this, look at that, look at how great that is. Those colors and look how much depth and how much realism there is in this dreamy piece. It actually had somewhat of a structure to it. It actually had somewhat of a theme. It was this little kid in the front, and then in the, the middle ground, it was this, this uh, figure, this kind of middle-aged man, um, lying on the ground and looking back on a ghost behind him. So it was the different stages of man's life, which was also really interesting. 
Because a lot of times, Dali stuff is just like, I don't know what that means. Even if you can't explain some of his pieces and explain, oh, this is what I enjoyed about it. That meant this, and he was saying this, and this is happening. Again, you don't have to put it into words. You can just stare at this painting and say, wow. It was a really pleasurable experience of seeing this Dali piece. It was kind of like if I met the Backstreet Boys today. Whenever I was a kid, I, along with the rest of the world, was obsessed with the Backstreet Boys. And if I had met them at nine years old, my mind would have been blown. And I would have been taken to that place of... Mm -hmm. But nowadays, if I met them, now I would see them and go, Oh wow, the Backstreet Boys. Cool. I liked your music growing up. You kind of inspired my love for music. It was a similar experience with the Dali piece, where I saw it, I had this emotional reaction, I went, oh wow, awesome. But then I walked into another room, and then I saw another painting. Sunday Afternoon on the Island of La Grande Jatte by Georges Seurat. I had seen this painting before, I'm sure you've seen it before, of people just sitting on a hill, watching the day pass, enjoying the park. It wasn't conquering a lot of deep, uh, emotions. It wasn't challenging, hardcore themes. It was just beautiful. It wasn't even that perfectly realistic, where you could definitely tell that it was a painting. All of the lines were crisp, all the people stood a little bit too straight, all of the people that were supposed to be moving were still. I'm not even going to try to explain the experience that I had with it. There was so much energy, there was a vibrance, the little dots appeared to vibrate. It made everything pulse with life. The shading was perfect, the lighting made it look so real. It just emanated life. I'm using words to try to explain it, but there's no way that I ever possibly could because I had seen the painting. I knew what I was going into, but I was not, but I, but I wasn't staring at it directly to be transported into this other place. That place of and the, the dots and the lights, the shading, the lighting and oh, Dali's piece was beautiful, but this piece, it will always stick in my head as one of the greatest artistic experiences I've ever had. I've never understood how people could say, I'm not really that artistic, or I'm not that creative. I know that everybody is different, and there are plenty of people who just don't think that way. But I know that art can be found in anything. If you're trying to build a deck, or if you're trying to come up with a more efficient system of organizing your office. All of this is creativity. It's all exercising that artistic muscle, and I believe it is a muscle. I believe it's something that needs to be worked out. Nowadays, we have such a short attention span. We need things to be in five-minute blocks. We listen to a song for three minutes. We put it on the background while we do other things and kind of forget that music is playing in general. I would ask you all to devote more time to art, not just high art, and going to a fancy art gallery and, and looking at stuff and going, oh, mm-hmm, yeah, no, that, that makes sense. Oh, how interesting. It says so much by saying so little. You don't have to do that. Just next time you're listening to a song, really listen to it. Stop doing what you're doing and just sit down and listen to it. Whenever you're watching a movie, don't just put it on in the bedroom or in the living room while you're, while you're cleaning stuff. Sit down and really watch it. Tune into it. Give your time to it. From there, you'll probably build up a hunger for more and more substance. And one of the things I'm very excited of is that we tend to be going more into a world of wanting experiences versus just wanting things. It's why vinyl is coming back and why people like Christopher Nolan and Quentin Tarantino are making people want to go back to the theater. It's not just about, oh, that was a good movie. It's about the movie experience. It's about the record experience. All sitting around this one box and experiencing this one thing together. Afterwards, talking about it and explaining it or not even using words, just all sitting around going, <sighs> yeah. I love that. For a while, I've understood that there are kind of two camps. Art that's made for money with no substance, and art that's made for art's sake or for someone with a lot of substance. 
And that's not to say that these two camps can't meet in the middle, where an artist can do something that they're passionate about and also make money as well. That's ideally where you'd like to be, is somewhere in the middle. But I see it more often than not of people tuning into this side just because it's easy, just because they don't have to think about it. They can kind of plug in and tune out and not realize what they're doing. Whereas over here, it is a little bit more complicated. It's a little bit more difficult. You can look at a painting or you can listen to a song and go, I don't, there's something, but what is it? It, sometimes it's like a puzzle. Sometimes it's trying to figure out what exactly not only what they're saying and what they're trying to get at with this, but how you feel about it. Sometimes it takes a little bit of internalizing. They're talking to you and you're the one that's interpreting it. So you have to internalize a lot of it. So no substance doesn't take any effort. And a lot of substance takes some to maybe a lot of effort. And I love that we're kind of moving into more of that experience. So join us in this camp where we devote more time to movies and music and paintings and books and all of this stuff that makes us happier than we could ever explain. What about you? Do you have an experience similar to mine of Dali's piece or Georges Seurat's piece? Do you have a favorite song that just you can't explain but you would like to try to? Do you have a favorite movie that you watch over and over again, not just because it has a really compelling storyline or really interesting characters, but because it sends you to a place of pure this? Let me know in the comments below. I'm always looking for interesting movies and songs and records and paintings and sculptures and poetry and books, any type of art form. If you love it, I want to know about it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Don't